All right. Good afternoon, friends. So before we start today's live stream of the Bible in Focus, need I remind everyone, uh, just a brief announcement, that um, the Bible raffle is moved on the 23rd of April. This will be live streamed. Okay, You'll be able to watch the Bible raffle live here in this channel here in this channel and it will be uh, it will be aired live from Pope Pius all and also um, for for the rest of you who still have the, the stubs you we still have uh, a few more days so that you could fill up the stubs and remit the payments back to the state of God ministry and also as well um, we will be resuming, actually, we are already, we will be starting the Bible exposition also in Pope Pius, Pope Pius 1.30 to 3.30. And uh, we encourage everyone, we encourage everyone to join us. And also, thirdly, um, re we are already conducting a membership program for the Seed of God ministry. There are a lot of benefits that members would would have if they are part of the state of God ministry. So we encourage everyone here to join us. Be a member of the state of God ministry. There is a ton of benefits that you you can experience being part of the ministry. All right. So let's get started. I would like the focus of today's message here in Bible in Focus to be on the children. Because when we take a close look at today's culture, we see a culture indoctrinating our children with a false notion of life, of reality. If not, we, so we see today's culture attacking our children, killing them, literally, in the literal sense, under the guise of the law. For example, is the... Uh, the issue of abortion. As much as we can, we will do an extensive exposition, expository preaching of God's Word in regards to this specific transgression of today's culture. Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca, and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. We live in an age where Western culture somehow made its way into the global arena. There's a good side to that in relation to progress, but in exchange of what? It would be easy to catch on that by progress, there is an equivalent cost. Progress in exchange of humanity, of morality. Always you can recognize this dilemma. And when you thought you have seen enough, you are dead wrong. The prevailing culture of our times found its way on how to indoctrinate people easily. And that is through our children. And it is a sad fact, a sad reality. Children with their fragile nature are easy to manipulate. It is as if they are, as if they see our children as a means to their ends. Children are sexualized, meaning to say the thinking of the children can easily be corrupted, indoctrinate them about the sexual orientation of today's culture, and they are propagating it. Like, for example, the LGBTQ. They target children's schools so that the issue of transgenderism can easily be put on 
in their minds. The perversity of it all. Matthew 18 verse 6. I'd like to read this for you. Matthew chapter 18 verse 6. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to fall away, it would be better for him if a heavy millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned into the depths of the sea. You can see how very important to Christ the children are. It is an unfortunate reality already that the children are being born into this sinful and corrupt world. But to corrupt the fragile, innocent minds of children is an abomination by itself, let alone leading the children away from Christ. It would be important to note how Jesus put it in words. It would be better for him, for that person, if a heavy millstone were hung around his neck. So what does this mean? The very burden of sin that the person is trying to put on a child, to be hung on him instead. The burden of sin that would pin a person on the ground so they cannot move. Remember that faith in Christ breaks the chain of sin. Believing in Christ grants us freedom from sin and death. This millstone is a round stone used to grind wheat or grain. Millstones are often called grindstones. And having this expression, hanging a millstone around the neck, meant carrying the heavy burden like a slave. In this manner, you are a slave to sin. Let every person who tries to make the children slaves to sin, let that burden be transferred to them. Burden times two. But that is not enough. Jesus did not stop there. He continued on. Okay? And he were drowned in the depths of the sea. That's the next part of the verse. And he were drowned in the depths of the sea. That is, in order to stop the spread of immorality, being taught to children, it is better that they not be allowed to exist anymore. They are to be brought to nothingness, executed due to moral depravity. You see how fierce the Lord is regarding influencing of children. This attack on children causes a tremendous deal. For the fact that children are in their formative years. This is planting season. Children, all right, children are easy to direct. That is why the children are truly the future of society. And since the family is the basic unit of society, the target is pointed on them by today's culture. In social media alone, and also, in the entertainment industry, TV shows, movies, you name it. Those are platforms used by today's culture. Because those are the easiest ways to reach the children. Take a look at the perversity nowadays shown by Disney films where the themes of the LGBTQ is pretty much obvious. It's pretty much prevalent. It is hard to trust the entertainment industries nowadays. Take a look at the local channels. Take a look. Not, let's, not, let's not go far 
into the international arena. Take a look at the local channels. At an early age, they are exposing children to everything, to sexual immorality, to lust, blatant disobedience. They are showing it, teaching children that it's normal and that it's okay. But the truth is, the children does not belong to this world. Matthew 19, verses 14 to 15. Jesus said, Live the little children alone, and don't try to keep them from coming to me, because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. After placing his hands on them, he went on from there. The children belong to God. Children has the easy access to the eternal kingdom of heaven. And our Lord makes it perfectly clear. Our Lord loves and cares the children, the orphans, the widows, those who doesn't have anyone to depend on, those who does not really receive anything from anybody. You want to know the truth? The Lord chooses. The Lord prioritizes them. Psalms 146, I'd like to share some texts here in the Old Testament. Psalms 146. Verse 9. The Lord protects resident aliens and helps the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. Psalm 68. Let me turn the pages here as well. Psalm 68, verse 5. God in his holy dwelling is a father of the fatherless and a champion of widows. And lastly, also in uh, Exodus. Exodus 22. Exodus 22, verses 22 to 24. You must not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them, they will no doubt cry to me, and I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will burn, and I will kill you with a sword, then your wives will be widows, and your children fatherless. And so it would be hard to ignore them and still call yourselves Christians because you are seen going to church every day. Let me repeat that. And so it would be hard to ignore them and still call yourselves Christians because what? You are seen going to church every Sunday. That's it. That is not being a Christian. Besides having your faith, besides having the faith, it's you bearing the fruits of it. To be a Christian, not only should you have faith, but you should act on your faith. You should act on your faith. What am I, what am I saying? Let me turn the pages of the Bible and show and share with you what Paul has to say when he wrote to the Galatians. That's in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. These fruits of the Spirit, these are the fruits that our Lord is basically looking for from people, from everyone. Us. It's us. For those who have faith, they should be able to bear fruit. You should be able to put into action the faith you proclaim that you have. To have a godly life meant having these fruits. This leads us back to our children. We lead them to Christ. We lead them to God. And here is the best example. Yahweh obligates us to teach our children about Him. Let me share with you the Shema prayer. This is a very well-known prayer um, practiced by the Jews. And let, may I suggest this is a perfect opportunity to actually practice this uh, on our own as well. I mean, this is very excellent. And uh, the Shema prayer is in Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, it's in chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, let me turn the pages of the Bible there. Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 to 9. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These words that I am giving you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand, and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates. What is this saying? We teach our children to love God above all else. Because if our children of today loves God and obeys His commandments, they will love, honor, and obey their parents inevitably. Remember this. Obedience honors God. And God honors obedience. We just cannot let other people teach our children how to live. Education truly starts at home. As parents, you should be able to teach your children the right way. Discernment happens in time. That is why every child should be guided and nurtured well this early. I am telling you all this now. These attacks on children, this will not stop, unfortunately. The evil in this world has crept and real deep into the system. It corrupted the very life and culture that held every society that makes us human. Truly evil masks itself under the guise of practicality and entertainment, deceiving people. Deceiving even the littlest of God's elect. There is this massive campaign. Blatant Satanism guised under the mask of education and entertainment creeping into the educational system, it is very sad. It is very sad that there are schools in the Western world teaching children the so-called norms of transgenderism, teaching them that it's normal and, that's, and that it's okay. These ongoing trend of drag queens, such depravity, its very existence being an abomination to God.
And there are a lot of texts here that we would like to point it out. That this is pointed out by the Bible. Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus 18.22 You are not to sleep with a man as with a woman. It is detestable. Leviticus 20 verse 13 If a man sleeps with a man as with a woman, they have both committed a detestable act. They must be put to death. Their death is their own fault. Also here in 1 Corinthians In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be deceived. No sexually immoral people, idolaters, adulterers, or males who have sex with males. No thieves, greedy people, drunkards, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. And lastly, in Romans, in the letter to Romans, chapter 1. Romans 1, verses 26 to 32. For this reason, God delivered them over to disgraceful passions the women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. The men in the same way also left natural relations with women and were inflamed in their lust for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty of their error. And because they did not think it worthwhile to, to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind so that they do what is not right. They are filled with all unrighteousness, greed, evil, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they know God's just sentence, that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. You heard that? Not only do people practice this evil, detestable act, they even applaud others who practice these things. This is how degenerate today's generation has come to be. You see children pushed to do cosplay of transgenderism. And you see their adults clapping for them. This kind of perversion gives me the chills. And this kind of lifestyle, lifestyle has got to stop. Nothing of this kind will merit the love and benefit of being a true Christian, a true believer, a follower of Christ. Because if you are, you have to stay put as to what God has to say. And this is by sticking it up with the scripture. And so we pray and focus our minds and hearts to the Lord. And we teach likewise all this to our children. Let us pray. Let's close our eyes, bow down our prayers, bow down our heads, and focus as we pray. Guide us, O Lord, to the right path. 
Let your spirit illumine our thoughts and fill us with your presence so that we will always know your will. Let our minds and hearts not waver amidst the lures and false hopes and false joy that runs rampant in this world. Lord, let us not fall into darkness. We pray for the children of today. We consecrate all of them to you. Keep them safe. Nurture them with your love so that they can mature as true Christians, obedient of your words. This we ask in Jesus' name. And so once again, uh, dear brothers and sisters, before I let you go, I'd like to give you a small reminder that uh, everyone should still keep safe when we're out of the house. You're in the public area. Just remember to still keep yourself free from any kind of sickness. And uh, also, if we have time, we encourage you to please, after this live stream, call us. Call us. Um, ask us about the Bible exposition that we're doing in Pope Pius. And we encourage you also to be a part of the ministry and be members. Call us. Join us. All right? So, and, and you will see how different it will be when you're engaged deeply into the Word of God. Not just by simply reading it, which of course we are encouraging you all to read your Bibles. But it's not only that. We do Bible exposition to make the Scripture simple. We expound it verse by verse, word by word, for your spiritual growth. Now, I'm not saying that no, no other people can do that, but here, you can experience it differently. So come, join us. Join us and see how expository preaching, ex the proper way of doing expo expository preaching of God's Word, you'll see how the Word of God transform your life for the better. So keep safe and God bless.